Welcome back to our airline planning and optimization course. In this seventh lecture, we're going to discuss the aircraft routing problem. We're going to divide our lecture into two parts. In the first part, we're going to discuss the aircraft routing problem and formulate it using a standard approach, an MLP approach. In the second part, we're going to propose a different type of technique, a dynamic programming approach, to solve the aircraft routing problem combined with the timetable design and also with some fleet considerations. In terms of the program, we're going to solve the aircraft routing problem, that's a tactical uh, planning problem, and we're going to use both MLP models and dynamic programming. And if we look into our planning framework, we have already solved the strategic problems, so the fleet planning and the network development. We have solved the scheduling planning problems, the timetable and the fleet assignment. And now we are already discussing the resource allocation part, in which in this lecture we're going to discuss the aircraft rotations or the aircraft routing problem. Okay, so let's start with the aircraft routing problem, describing what it is and formulating this problem according to an MLP uh, model. Okay, but let's start by understanding what is the difference between the fleet assignment problem, which we discussed a couple of lectures ago, and the aircraft routing problem that we are trying to solve. The fleet assignment problem determines the aircraft type, so if it's a Boeing 777 or an Airbus A320 or a regional jet, that we are allocating to each flight in our timetable. So we are defining the capacity that we'll have available for each flight, if we'll have 100 seats or 160 seats or 200 seats for a specific flight. On the other hand, the aircraft routing problem is allocating specific aircraft to these flights in our timetable. So we are allocating the tail numbers, every single aircraft in our fleet is associated with a tail number, so we are allocating tail numbers to each flight in our network. What we are doing with the aircraft routing problem is to allocate specific sequence of flights in the coming days to each aircraft in our fleet. So we are defining the routes of this aircraft in the coming days. And this is the result of the aircraft routing problem. And to get this uh, result, we have to fulfill some requirements, like we have to operate all flights in our timetable, and we can only allocate one aircraft to each flight. We also would like to balance the way that we are using our aircraft in the fleet, so we don't want to use some aircraft more than the other set of aircraft, because these aircraft, if they are used much more than the others, they will get older much faster than the others. We will also have to comply with all maintenance requirements associated with each specific aircraft in our network while producing these routes. So, common objectives when formulating this problem regard the uh, minimization of the total operating costs if aircraft of the same aircraft type have different costs and then we can decide which one to use in each flight or the maximization of the maintenance opportunities generated by the location of aircraft to flights and then we can see when the turnarounds take place, where and when to make maintenance. We have also to subject our solution to a set of considerations. Like, as I said, we have to cover each flight by one and only one of our aircraft in our fleet. We have to produce a continuous route to each aircraft in our fleet and continuous in time, but also in space. We have to limit our solution to the number of aircraft that we do have in our fleet. And we have to follow all the requirements regarding maintenance and airworthiness that apply to each aircraft. There are also minimum turnaround times that we have to consider in each airport. And as I said, a common requirement is also to balance the utilization of aircraft in our fleet, so to have a uniform wear and tear in our fleet, so we don't have aircraft getting older sooner than the others. This aircraft routing problem is also called in the literature the aircraft maintenance routing problem. And the reason being that the maintenance scheduling is linked with the aircraft routing uh, definition. So aircraft have to uh, go uh, into maintenance frequently in a regular base. There are maintenance checks which are defined according to intervals and they are performed, these maintenance checks, at specific uh, maintenance stations, so usually the hub of the airline. Furthermore, there are also some regular inspections that we have to perform in each aircraft. So ideally, we'd like to have our aircraft in our maintenance base every three to five days to perform maintenance if needed. 
So a typically approach for this aircraft routing problem is to provide enough maintenance opportunities to have these regular inspections and eventually these checks. So we want to provide slack times at the station and to guarantee that our aircraft at least every three or five days visits the maintenance uh, station during the night. To see how to formulate this problem, let's use an example. And I'm going to use here an example provided in the book from Bazargan, the Airline Operations and Scheduling book, in which we have uh, six aircraft and we want to operate a set of flights between these uh, five uh, airports. So uh, JFK is our hub and we're going to fly to Miami, Atlanta, Boston and San Francisco. The timetable is provided in this slide, uh, all in the local times, and we have uh, the flight duration and the number of the flight and origin and destination with the respective uh, times. The goal is to create these routes, and these routes are also called sometimes strings of flights or lines of flights, which are just a sequence of flights over a number of days. In this case, we're going to produce routes for three days, which are continuous in time and space. We're going also to consider that in all airports we have a 45 minutes turnaround. So for instance, when we try to create a route and we start with the flight from Miami to JFK, we cannot follow this flight with the flight from JFK to Boston that departs at half past noon, because it's not feasible according to our 45 minutes turnaround. But we can eventually follow this one with a flight from JFK to Miami at 10 past 3 or JFK to Atlanta and JFK to Miami uh, after 6 p.m. So we also want to guarantee that each aircraft is uh, routed in such a way that there is at least one overnight at JFK during these three days so we can perform this maintenance. And valid routes start and end at the same airport, so there is a cycle uh, in each uh, route and includes, as I said, at least one stay at JFK for maintenance. And here is an example of a possible route. So we start at JFK in day one, we come to San Francisco, day two, the aircraft goes from San Francisco back to JFK and day three flies back and forth to Atlanta, ending again at JFK. Okay, so in this case, we do have uh, two um, uh, overnights at JFK, so two maintenance opportunities. We want to guarantee that we are covering our flights all the three days. So each flight from our timetable, and the timetable is repeated every single day, has to be covered. So we do have the flight number 125 from JFK to San Francisco, and we have to cover these in day one, but also in day two. And if you look to all 455 possible routes that we can generate from this timetable, there's only six routing possibilities that cover flight 125 in one of the days. So there is candidate one, which has uh, this flight 125 in day one, and then follows a flight back to JFK from San Francisco. And in day three, as we saw in the previous slide, go back and forth to Atlanta. There is candidate two that does the same thing in day one and two, but in the day three goes back and forth from Boston. And then we have the different combinations that cover the flight in day two and the flight in day three. So how are we going to formulate this? We have uh, six possible candidates. And we want to guarantee that either candidate X1 or candidate X2 is chosen. So we make sure that flight 125 in day one is covered and that candidate X3 or candidate X4 is chosen. So we cover the same flight in day two and the same thing that either candidate X5 or candidate X6 is chosen. So what we're going to do is to create this additional matrix, so this AIJ, which tell us if a flight I is covered in route J or not. So if IAJ is equal to one, it means that flight I is part of the route J and zero otherwise. So by using this additional matrix, we can generalize these considerations that we saw here on the top for this flight 125 with this formulation here, where we sum for all routes, the multiplication of this matrix AIJ times our decision variable xij, and this needs to be equal to one. So this means that at least one of the possible candidates that include the flights according to this matrix ij has to be chosen, and only one of them has to be chosen for each one of our flights i in our set of flights f. 
And I'm getting already into the nomenclature of our model, but let's recapture here. We have two sets, the sets R that are the number of possible routings. So for this problem, 455 possible routings. We have F, the set of flights from our timetable. We have, as I said, the decision variables XJ that say if our route X from the pool of possible routes is selected or not. So one if selected and zero otherwise. And what we are trying to do here is to select the routes that we're going to cover our flights once and only once, similar way that we did for the crew pairing problem. And we have a set of parameters. So MJ is the number of maintenance opportunities that we are creating by choosing a specific route J. AIJ we already discussed, and we do have N as the total number of aircraft in our fleet. So if we follow this nomenclature, we can formulate our problem. And this problem falls again into the set partitioning type of problems. The objective is to maximize maintenance opportunities according to the set of routes that we are selecting. And this is subject to a set of constraints. The first set are the constraints that we already discussed, and these are the ones that guarantee that we are selecting routes that cover each flight in our timetable once and only once. And the second set of constraints is a single constraint that guarantees that we are not selecting more routes than the number of aircraft that we have available in our fleet in order to fulfill those routes. In terms of model size, we have a model that has as many constraints as the number of flights in our timetable plus one, which is this constraint three, and variables are as many as the number of routes that we can generate from our timetable. So if we use this model to solve our problem, the one that we got from the Bazargan book, we'll end up having multiple alternative optimal solutions. So that means solutions which will have exactly the same objective function value. Here is one of these possible alternative solutions. So we have six routes because we do have six aircraft in our fleet. And for instance, the first route, it's comprised flying the flight 125 and the flight 105 in day one. So JFK to San Francisco, and then back to JFK in the same day. Then flying the flight 135 to Miami and in day three flying back from Miami to JFK in flight 114. This route creates two maintenance opportunities, one between day three and day one and the other one between day one and day two. The route two has only one maintenance opportunity like route three and so on. And if we sum all the maintenance opportunities that we do have in this table, we'll end up with a value of nine and that's exactly our objective function value. Okay, before closing the lecture, there are some remarks I would like to discuss with you. So the first one is that this is a very simple model. So where is the complexity? And is this more complex or less complex than the crew scaling models that we discussed in the previous lecture? in particular the crew pairing problem. I would also like to call your attention that in this solution, we didn't consider the fact that we eventually we want to balance the utilization of aircraft in each route. Coincidentally, the result that we obtain from the solution is not that bad, so it's more or less balanced. So if you look to all these six routes from our solution, for these three days, we have 17 to 19 hours of utilization for each aircraft, which is not too high, I must say, but it's balanced anyway. And there is also a step missing in this problem, which is to allocate specific tail numbers to all these six routes. And despite the fact that these routes are not too unbalanced, we like to rotate the routes among each aircraft in our fleet, so they age in a uniform way. So a potential solution will be to create 18-day sequence of routes, so six times three days, in which aircraft one will be allocated, for instance, to route three, followed by route one, then route four, six, two, five, and then go back to route three, and so on. And then aircraft one will start with route one in days uh, one to three, then move to four, and so on. And we have a sequence of cycles to each aircraft in our fleet, and they will all cover all routes that we have generated. And this way, after 18 days, they will have exactly the same utilization, facilitating then the schedule of our maintenance checks in the future. So with this, I would like to close this video lecture. We'll have a following video lecture in which we're going to discuss another approach to solve this problem. I'll see you there.